So Mayo edge closer to relegation with a defeat at home to Kerry. They lose by a point, 113 to 114. And that is what is coming up in today's video. We're gonna be discussing what has gone wrong at Mayo, why it looks like they are about to be relegated, and what to expect from Mayo moving forward, going into the 2020 championship. Coming up on today's video, let's get straight into it. But I suppose first of all, we will jump into Mayo's uh, loss at home to Kerry. And, you know, one of the big problems, of course, for this year when Mayo has been their forward line, they certainly haven't been hitting as much points and goals as you would have expected. They have the lowest return out of any side in Division 1 so far this season. Um, and, you know, that didn't change, of course, in this game. Uh, obviously, James Horn has tried a lot of things out with his Mayo team. He is uh, trying to bring in young players and, and more kind of newer players into the scene to really try and uh, freshen things up at Mayo because, obviously, a lot of their older guard are retiring, the likes of Andy Moran, for example, uh, Keith Higgins. Um, of course, you have the old guard in Lee Keegan, Dermot O'Connor and Aidan O'Shea, but certainly these are players that have been around a long time. And when you look at what Mayo have won in the past four to five years, they don't really have anything to show for it, other than, of course, the National League last year. But um, does that is that really that important? Of course, we all know that Mayo want that All-Ireland. That is what you know really matters at the top level of Gaelic football. Obviously, they have introduced some players that do in some ways look bright. Owen McLaughlin, I thought, was actually quite good in that game versus Kerry. A goal and a point, and he looked uh, quite lively at times. Um, of course, we also seen uh, James Durkin, who has looked quite bright at times for, uh, for Mayo this year. In particular, that goal he scored against Donegal um, showed some impressive signs in this game. And he's showed some impressive signs in general for Mayo against Meade as well, of course. Um, but yeah, Mayo just fell behind way too early. They weren't able to keep up with uh, the likes of David Clifford and Kerry. Of course, Sean O'Shea getting on the score sheet quite early on for Kerry meant that it was always going to be very difficult, of course, for Mayo to go ahead and try and turn it around. They showed some quality in the second half, of course, as I said before, bringing on Owen McLaughlin. Uh, he looked quite bright for Mayo and, and gave them a, a different sort of energy and gave them a different sort of momentum. Ryan O'Donoghue looking quite good as well at times, but... Um, as I said before, and as I said in my preview for the National Football League, that I felt that Mayo, you know, things have to get a little bit worse before they get better with Mayo. In other words, they have to, for me, get a, you know, have a relegation, be relegated to Division Two, suffer that pain, suffer that, um, and more sort of hardship around the county. But I think in the long run, it could serve them better because obviously. They want to be playing these players now. They want to be giving these players game time. They want to be getting these players involved. Um, and they want to be giving these players as much time as possible to really adapt and get that experience at this level. Um, obviously, it could potentially hurt Mayo going into the uh, All-Ireland Championship going into this year. But of course, we know that... Um, you know, the current crop of players that they've had over the past couple of years hasn't done the job anyway, you know. As we said before, the experienced players like Lee Keegan, Dermot O'Connor, um, Aidan O'Shea, and some of the other players there, Kevin McLaughlin, a lot of these players have flopped quite massively, unfortunately. Um, not just in the All-Ireland scene, but actually in the Connick Championship. Mayo haven't won a Connick Championship since 2015. Um, and when you think about that, that's that's just incredible, really, considering, for me, they've been the best team in Connacht for the past five years. I know Galway and Roscommon have had their, their bright moments, but in general, Mayo were the better team for, for a long period of time. I think they showed that by reaching All-Ireland semi-finals, reaching All-Ireland finals. Um, and, and the fact that they didn't, uh, you know, they flopped quite massively in the Connacht Championship, not even making Connacht finals at times, which I think is the biggest surprise there. So... So certainly, this new approach by Mayo for me, um, I think I think it's it's positive in my opinion. It's positive trying these players out and giving them game time. Yes, of course, it might not work out right now, and yes, of course, it's looking very likely that they will get relegated. But I think in the long run, I think it it, it could uh, be way more beneficial um, to Mayo than people think because if these younger players gain more experience. 
um, you know, moving forward. I think it will it will help them. And look, listen, Mayo in Division Two next season, it will be more of an opportunity to give more younger players a chance, and 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 they they probably still get promoted that way. So it's it's not too much of a big deal in my opinion. And they won the national league last year, so it's not as if um, they're trying to you know. Uh, end the weight or, or would winning it really make that much of a difference I'm not sure um, but obviously we have to talk a bit about Kerry as well huge win for them I think they are very much set um, towards a National League final it's certainly looking like uh, Kerry and Galway will be the two teams to reach a National League final although Dublin do have the uh, the beneficial, uh, you know, the, the benefiting side of playing Mead in their final two matches, which I think should be a routine victory for the Dubs. Whereas uh, Galway uh, will play not just Dublin, but will play Mayo as well. You'd fancy Galway to beat Mayo, obviously, at home, but they are playing Dublin on the final day, which um, may be pretty difficult. But of course, they could have their National League final status assured by them. Um, yeah, I think Galway have been the team of the year so far, in my opinion. They certainly weren't great at times against Mead. Um, they didn't really get into the game. They struggled to break Mead down, um, and they took a while to get going. Maybe some, complac some complacency after that fantastic 22-point win over, um, or 19-point win over Tyrone. Um, perhaps that was the the kind of uh, reason for them uh, you know not quite showing up against me the way we would have liked um, but certainly they show the quality in the end they pulled through in the closing stages and got the victory over Mead which of course uh, sends me down Mead now relegated to division two without a doubt there's no way they'll be able to turn it around of course no real surprise there in my opinion I think Mead though at times have shown the uh, the quality well, not necessarily the quality, but they have shown the fight at times, and they have shown that they they can compete at this level. It's not like they've been absolutely hammered in every single game. You know, very close to beating Galway, of course, in this game. Very close to beating Mayo in, in that game. Showed some quality when they played Kerry as well. So Mead can be quite happy and can be quite positive with how they have played and how they've conducted themselves in Division 1. But ultimately, the lack of quality and the lack of forwards really... Um, and the lack of kind of physical edge has really cost them in the closing stages. Um, and yeah, lads, of course, Kerry, as I said before, they got the win versus Mayo, and they are looking uh, quite bright and looking quite, uh, you know, very certain to reach that National League final. Um, again, you know, their their star men, David Clifford, Sean O'Shea, looking um, as bright as ever, bringing in young players like Paul Murphy who's able to interchange the play and, and make a bit of a difference, um, especially in those forward lines. And then, of course, you have the experience, Tommy Walsh, Ryan or uh, James O'Donoghue, who's uh, come back into the Kerry fold and who's you know showing those leadership qualities that, of course, um, you would expect him to show over some of the younger players in the side. But anyway, lads, of course, that is going to be the end of the video. Just making a quick reaction to some of this weekend's results. Um, of course, not able to go through every game, um, but certainly at the moment, um, you know, huge results, of course, for Kerry and for um, and for you know Galway, and of course for Tyrone as well, keeping them uh, solidified now, in my opinion, in Division um, in Division One. That was a huge victory for them. Um, and putting them in a fantastic position. And of course for Dublin, obviously, uh, making their chances of playing in a National League final quite uh, bleak. And as I said in previous videos before, I don't think Dublin have been uh, that great in the National League this year. We've been um, quite lucky to, to get some wins over the line and get some, get some draws over the line in the closing stages of matches. But uh, it is what it is. But of course, uh, yeah, lads, do hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys uh, thought of some of this weekend's action. Of course, stay tuned for a couple of videos coming this week. I'll be talking a bit about VAR in Gaelic football, uh, a bit more detail into David Clifford. Um, and yeah, be making more videos as always. So anyway, lads, my name is Aaron, and I will catch you all next time.